Data cleaning is hard because it always takes longer than you expect. And it's really, really difficult to predict in advance where the problems are going to lie. At the same time, that's where you get the value and can do stuff that no one has done before. The easy, clean data set has already been analyzed to death. If you want something that's unique and really interesting, you've got to dig for it. Actually cleaning your data is when you're getting to know it intimately, uh, which is from a guy named Hadley Wickham, that's him, um, who created a um, statistical analysis tool called RStudio. Um, but I, I really like that. D cleaning your data is when you get to know it intimately. Um, so you've gone out, you found this data from the government, from a, a nonprofit, uh, you've maybe built a data, database yourself, um, and now you've got to go clean it. How do you do that? What does that look like? So before you do anything, save the original. Uh, don't start making changes on data without saving the original data set so that you can always go back. If you, you know, make a mistake or you do something wrong, you've always got a clean, you know, not cleaned, but raw set of data um, that you started with. Sort every column, both ascending and, and descending. So um, this is assuming you've got data in a spreadsheet. That's sort of um, where the cleaning process comes in, right? You've got to have the data in something that you can um, kind of use and, and manipulate it. Um, and so I always, if I get a data set, um, sort everything, start, you know, let's say it's a data set on, um, I don't know, housing prices by neighborhood in Chicago, okay, from Zillow or whatever. Um, you know, short ascending and descending for each of the different columns and see what neighborhoods show up at the top, what are the numbers, what's the highest, what's the lowest, does anything look like it's too high or too low or like a crazy outlier, um, and that might be something that you need to dig into and make sure is accurate and, and correct. Count the number of records. So make sure that you have the number of records that you think you have. If you have a data set that's supposedly about the 50 states, are there 50 rows to it? Maybe there's 51 because they include DC. Maybe there's 54 because they include like the minor outlying islands in Puerto Rico. I don't know, but like make sure like that you have the number of records that you're expecting to have. Check for duplicates. Um, are there, you know, if you've got that 50 state data set and there's 51 rows and then you look and you're like, wait, actually there's no DC, but they have Illinois twice. So what's up with that? And make sure that that's accurate. If you're looking at campaign finance data, for example, bless you. Um, you know, and there's two rows of $5,000 donations from the same businessman to the same candidate. Were those two separate 5,000 donations, or were they the same $5,000 donation that somehow got recorded twice? So looking into things that are duplicates, sometimes duplicates are intentional, and that's right, um, and sometimes it's a sign that there's something, um, something missing. Run a, a pivot table. So um, I don't know how, how familiar folks are with Excel. Um, there's a cool tool within Excel called uh, Pivot Table, um, also in, in Google Sheets, um, where you can kind of group uh, your data together by certain columns. So again, let's say you've got um, a uh, you've got data on um, again we'll use campaign finance, right? You've got um, donations to different. Um, politicians, you know, all 50 aldermen in Chicago. Um, so running a pivot table on the aldermen's names might tell you if you have the same alderman spelled two different ways. Um, or if you have, um, you know, multiple kind of campaign funds for the same alderman. Um, so doing things like that will help you figure out if your data is clean or dirty, right? If it's, um, you know, uh, if the data, again, campaign finance data has addresses for all the people who donated um, and you run a pivot table on the city name um, and you can see because you want to see um, where do the people live who are donating to different candidates uh, make sure that there's only one way that they're spelling Chicago right because uh, maybe it's you know spelled out Chicago in one case but it's CHGO in another place because they abbreviated it um, so making sure that those things are consistent um, is a good good data cleaning step and comes back to calling the source of the data if you aren't sure. Um, you know, just call and ask if there's something. So if you saw those two campaign finance contributions, uh, both for $5,000 from the same person to the same person on the same date, call up the source and say, hey, is it possible that this is the same donation or um, did they just give twice on the same day for whatever reason? 
Um, and then record the steps that you take. Keep a diary of everything that you do so that if you are cleaning things or making changes to the data, um, you can always go back and, um, and double check it. So there's a cool tool for this, which if we have a little time at the end, which I'm not sure if we will, um, I can just walk through really quickly. But um, it's this free tool called Workbench. Um, again, there's a link there. I think it's workbenchdata.com. Um, and it basically does all that those steps for you or makes it really easy to do those steps. So it's all in like a really, um, you know, in your browser, you can pull in data from a data portal or upload a spreadsheet. Um, and then you can do some of that cleaning. You can sort and you can filter and you can, um, you know, check names and run you know, pivot tables and things like that. And it, it records every step for you along the way. So you can go back and redo it or you can replicate it if new data comes in. Um, so it's a really cool tool that's, uh, that's worth playing around with.